Live from our Melbourne headquarters, this is 7 News with Jennifer Kite. Good evening. The world has lost a legend with the death of Muhammad Ali at the age of 74. A three-time world heavyweight champion, he was also a celebrated humanitarian and champion for civil rights. After battling Parkinson's disease for three decades, Ali lost his final fight with respiratory illness, surrounded by his family in a U.S. hospital. I must be the greatest. I told the world. He was as fast with his mouth as he was with his fists. Don't we rumble? Float like a butterfly and sting like a beast. Ah, rumble, young man. Born Cassius Clay, he won 1960 Olympic gold in Rome, but when turned away from a whites-only restaurant when he returned home, he threw the medal in a river. He taunted then-world champion Sonny Liston for a shot at the title. Liston fired a gun at him, but Clay then turned up on his front lawn I want to hurt you. Do you fight me? in a bus demanding the fight. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sunday. He would go on to beat Liston, his speed and footwork, pure artistry, boxing not seen before in the heavyweight division, reducing the brutal Liston to a beaten quitter, unwilling to leave his stool after six rounds. And Cassius Clay has won after six rounds, and there's the champion, the ex-champion. Not content with being champ, after the fight, he announced he'd joined the Nation of Islam, a black separatist organisation, and had changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Clay was a white man's name, it was a slave name, and I'm no longer Clay, I'm no longer a slave, so now I'm Muhammad Ali. In 67, he refused induction to the draft for Vietnam. I ain't got nothing against those Viet Cong, he famously said. But in war... The intention is to kill, 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 and continue killing innocent people. By then more reviled than loved in his own country, Ali was stripped of his title and exiled from boxing for three and a half years, his prime years. Ali would return to lose to Joe Frazier in the so-called fight of the century, but would then beat George Foreman in the rumble in the jungle. For the last three decades of his life, Ali fought Parkinson's disease. Those magical feet, unreliable, the fast-talking mouth, silent. But he was revered as a man who fought for civil rights. He shakily lit the flame at the Atlanta Olympics where he was given a second gold medal to replace the one he'd tossed away. At the London Games, his last appearance on the world stage, he was so frail, but still the star of stars. Muhammad Ali was a champ to the end, truly the greatest. He was 74. In the United States, Mike A. Moore, 7 News. Muhammad Ali was a frequent visitor to Melbourne over the years, charming a legion of fans with his quick wit and big heart. Whenever Muhammad Ali visited Melbourne, the fans followed. Wherever he went... People, people were just in awe of him. He would stop, you know, crowds would form around him and he would never turn, turn people away. One of Ali's last visits to Melbourne was in 1998 for the AFL Grand Final. He was there to attend a private function hosted by Richard Pratt, but took the time to meet another Muhammad, a young Somalian refugee. That was the turning point for him going from being a kid at risk to going into gangs <clears throat> to being a... Uh, a father these days. At the 1979 Logies, Bert Newton was almost introduced to Ali's fists after inadvertently using a racial slur. I like the boy. <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. No, no. I'll change religion, I'll do anything for you. I don't, I don't care. But Melbourne's boxing community says he'll always be remembered as a gentle man with a heart of gold. Going to be sadly, sadly missed. Estelle Greepink, 7 News.